All right, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to our 1230 Tech Talk here at Bendix. Uh, feel free, anybody want to come sit down and, and listen to a 10 minute talk and have a Bendix t-shirt here. Uh, so our topic today is CSA and fractions and how to avoid them. My name is Troy Flodeen. I'm an engineering manager at Bendix Spicer Foundation Break, and with me is Frank Gilboy. He's a product manager for Bendix Spicer as well. Uh, so we're gonna talk about CSA and fractions for just about 10 minutes, just some things to look for and what you wanna watch out for as, as preventing these infractions, because we know if you get an out of service condition and your truck's pulled down, not only are you missing valuable time where you could be operating on the road, you're missing, you're disappointing your customers, dissatisfying them, but also that meant that you had an unsafe vehicle driving down the roadway. And at Bendix, we feel that's probably the biggest problem with it. It's not so much the lost revenue and the relationships, but operating unsafe vehicles is a big deal, and we wanna prevent that whenever we can. Uh, an interesting statistic that we know is in 2014, when CVSA did their, their annual brake safety week, they found that 10% of all vehicles on the roadway had out of stroke condition on, their, on one of their brakes and were put out of service. So one out of 10 vehicles on the road, when they did their blitz, they found to be out of service because of stroke. That means that one of 10 vehicles driving around you on the road today is probably in that condition. We wanna make sure that's not anybody that's here today as much as we can. So, when we talk about vehicle inspections and avoiding infractions, the, the biggest thing is preventative maintenance and inspections. So it's all about checking your truck yourself before you get into a situation where you've got a trooper or some agency that's out there looking at your truck for you. So uh, first thing you want to do is look for broken components and you want to march all the way down everything that has to do with the braking system. Uh, brake drums is definitely a big one. A lot of people get confused with the small heat checks on the surface of a drum. You can have minor, you know, two inch cracks that look dangerous, but they're not. They're just heat checks from normal expansion contraction of the drum. You want to look for anything that's actually going through the drum surface. And even what the, the CSA describes it as is when you apply the brakes, if you see it open, one of these cracks, that's a structural crack that's dangerous. That has to be replaced. Uh, you'd also want to go and march through. Uh, oh, on drums as well, we do want to point out that we don't recommend turning brake drums. Uh, that was a common practice in the past, but most most braking companies and most vehicle companies are getting away from recommending that just because you never know exactly how well you're maintaining that as you're taking that thickness down you're getting closer and closer to a wear out condition that you'd like to avoid getting beyond the wear limits. Um, other components to check for you want to look at brackets. Uh, the, the air chamber bracket is definitely a, a component that will see failures from time to time. Um, the wing bracket or the air chamber arm where the air chamber mounts can have have small hairline cracks that are difficult to see if it's, you know, you've got some mud and, and some gunk on there. So you want to clean it off and check to make sure you have no cracks there as well. Um, air chambers are also, as you all know, I'm sure, uh, a problem with failures. You can see small hairline cracks where it actually mounts to the air chamber bracket here. If you see any hairline cracks starting to form, that means that it will likely grow to a larger crack and be a problem. So that should be replaced. Another failure that we uh, everybody sees very commonly on air chambers is the power spring failure. Um, if you don't have a power spring, you don't have parking. And what happens on power springs is that's collapsed running down the road every day. The vibrations cause that to, the coils to rub on each other and it, it tears away. At, this is a, a e-coat coating on there that has a very good salt life. But as you start to rub those components together, it'll wear away that coating. Now it's exposed metal, you get corrosion and corrosion is the first step towards having a failure. Uh, that's definitely one of the advantages that Bendix touts on our Eversure, Eversure brake chamber is that when this coil is fully collapsed running down the road, these spring coils don't touch each other. And we've got some good demonstrations over here on the screens where if they're not collapsed on each other, it's not fretting, it's not rubbing away that coating and letting corrosion get started on there. Um, other things you want to look at, Frank will talk about slacks and chambers uh, in a minute, but you definitely want to look for leaking air anywhere. That's definitely a sign that something's uh, gone wrong. And checking your air chamber strokes is definitely important. As I said before, 10% uh, of the vehicles they checked for safety week had out of stroke conditions. So uh, you'd want to follow the, the, there's many written procedures from many companies, but basically you, you mark the air chamber when it's off, you apply 90 PSI and see how much it's traveled. You need to compare that number to what the chamber's rated to. You always want to look, make sure you're looking at your tags, that you have the right chamber. Long strokes have a different condition than, than standard strokes and a lot of people get that confused. So you want to look for your trapezoid tab or your, uh, your square ports for your long strokes. Uh, one final point I'll make as well, when, you're, when you are servicing these and replacing these, we always recommend that you match both ends of the axle so that they're running the same. 
technically CSA won't call it an infraction if you have a long stroke on one end and a standard stroke on the other end of the same axle, but that's definitely not recommended because you're going to have different brake performance at each one of those ends. It leads to pull, leads to imbalanced braking, could lead to thermal issues. We want to have balance left to right as best we can. So anytime you're doing a service or a replacement part, we always want you to match axle sets. That goes for uh, oil seal failures on one end. You should replace both sides of that axle so everything's the same, same components. Uh, speaking of oil, we definitely do not recommend cleaning oil off the brake. I know there's different shops that have different recommendations about how much oil is dangerous, how much is okay, can you clean it off, can you power wash it, but here at Bendix we don't recommend washing off that oil because that's soaking into the lining and it will affect brake performance. So it's, it's too difficult to say just how bad the performance may get, how it changes with that oil. So we want to clean it off and uh, make sure you're running clean linings when that happens. So with that, I'll let Frank talk a little bit about friction shoes and slacks. All right, thank you, Troy. Uh, so I'm going to start by talking about the slack adjuster and just kind of highlighting some ways that it could impact not only the performance of your vehicle, but also your ability to have a worry-free uh, you know, aspect from the CSA inspections. Uh, so first off, the one big thing to remember is it's an automatic slack adjuster, so you should never really be having to go in and adjust it. So if you find during any kind of inspection, you're having to either back it off or adjust the brakes manually, that's a great indicator that you have a problem. So I mean, if you're finding that at any point you need to go in there and, and adjust that slack adjuster manually, that's a great little indicator that you may be having a problem, especially if it's not adjusting up. So I mean, especially if you're finding you're gonna have to manually tighten up the brakes and move them uh, closer to the drum, that's a great indicator that you've got a, a, a situation with the slack adjuster and the best practice is to go ahead and, uh, and to replace it. The other thing is, you know, as far as maintenance goes, you know, properly greasing it. So you can see on the cutaway here, we have a lot of intricate components in there. Uh, so those components all you know, are subject to corrosion. So you want to make sure that you're constantly going in there at any any time you're um, you know, doing maintenance on the vehicle, greasing the slack and making sure that you're keeping it fil filled with grease so no contaminants can go in there and create any issues. Oh, sorry. Um, I don't know if it give me more mic or... <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, they got it. Apparently I have some issues with microphones this week. But um, So on the slack adjuster, the one thing that people don't think about is the slack adjuster could also affect your out of stroke condition. So different slack adjusters use different mechanisms for, for adjustment and those adjustment mechanisms and the amount of free stroke that they consume just by their adjustment could lead you to the point where you're consuming some of your stroke by the adjustment mechanism of the slack and therefore leaving yourself with less available safety stroke and to you know, touch on the, the measurements that Troy was talking, you would see that the, the free play of the chamber prior to engaging the shoes is going to be greater. So therefore, you're using more stroke prior to engaging it. Um, we do have some literature uh, in the booth over here at one of our stations where you can see based on some popular slack adjusters that are out there in the market, you can see the available uh, free stroke, the remaining safety reserve stroke, whatever kind of terminology you want to use. But that stroke that's not being consumed by the slack adjuster as part of its adjustment, that is available to make sure that you are uh, in compliance and not overstroking. So the next thing I'll talk about is the brake shoe. Uh, the big thing with brake shoes that we see when we talk about CSA inspections is cracking. Uh, so cracking happens for a lot of different reasons. One of the things that we recognize at Bendix is there's no real one cure-all for, for cracking. You need to make sure you're doing several things correctly. First of all is the fitment of the friction. So you can see on all the shoes we have in here in our booth, you will see that there is no gap between the friction and the steel table. Uh, one of the great little checks you could do if you're buying a new brake shoe is take a business card in there. If you could slide the business card in there, you've got a problem. Um, so that's basically saying that, that this friction is not in full contact with the steel. So what's going to happen when you go ahead and engage that brake? You're going to compress everything. You're going to crack it. Um, so I mean, that's one of the big things to look at. The way companies make sure that on remanufacturing they are putting a shoe together properly is a process called coining. So when we talk about coining, you put this thing back into a press, you apply a thousand, a thousand tons of pressure, and you form the shape back so that it's a proper fitment to the friction and you don't have any gaps there. So always when you're installing the shoe, prior to uh, you know, letting that truck go out, make sure that you're taking a look at it and making sure there's no gap in between there. The other important thing is corrosion. So especially up north, we're from Cleveland, where we dump a lot of salt and different chemicals on the road, and that eats away at the shoe table underneath here. So you get a lot of corrosion underneath the shoe, and you kind of get a, a double whammy here, where if you've got a gap, you start to get some of those chemicals and corrosive agents underneath the friction. You start corroding that shoe table, and as that, uh, as that corrosion starts to expand and, and, and develop layers of corrosion, it puts upward force on the friction, and that upward force on the friction will actually start to see cracks across the rivets. Those are going to be a flag that you're going to have a trouble at, the, at an inspection point. Uh, and lastly, the thing that we do here at Bendix is pay attention to the strength of the friction. Um, so we recognize that we're going to coin all of our tables to make sure that we get the proper fitment. 
We're going to put our best Protex coating on there to make sure we c control corrosion. But at the end of the day, you know, with corrosion, you're always fighting a battle that you're not going to win. So you want to make sure the last uh, last defense is a strong friction. So there's a process called flexural strength and friction. So you take a look at the friction and you and you and you bend the small sample of it, and that gives you the strength. I mean, how much force does it take to crack the friction? So you know, by default, you think about it. If you have a stronger friction, you're going to be a lot less likely to have a cracked friction. So so even if even if over time you get a deformed table. Or you know you're out there for a long time, or, or you're parked in a situation that creates a lot of corrosion. If you still have a strong friction at the end of the day, you're going to have a high likelihood of not getting cracks. And cracks are very obvious. Cracks are a, a number, you know, a very high reason why you're going to see, you know, CSA inspection results because they're just so obvious. You start seeing cracks, whether it's delamination across the side or cracks that go up through a rivet hole. These are the kind of things that are very easy to get caught in an inspection. But if you just take a little time and look at the shoe that you're uh, you're purchasing up front making sure you're getting a coin shoe, making sure you're getting a properly coated shoe, and making sure that you're getting a, you know, a high strength friction put on that, a friction that doesn't want to crack, you're going to have a, a lot, le lot less likelihood of having the crack occur over the service life of the shoe. So with that, that's uh, some highlights on the, on the shoes and slacks. Um, so any other questions you would have, you know, Troy and I could certainly hang around here for a while. Did you have any comments to wrap up? No, just happy to have everybody operating safely. You know, I, I, I do believe that's a lot more important than avoiding a ticket or, or losing a day at work. It's making sure there's safe vehicles out there. So thanks for your time.